Today, I'm going to show you how to add color to your landscape photos in Photoshop. Hey everyone and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on Flurn.com where we make learning fun. And today's episode is so much fun, we're going to show you a couple quick methods you can use to add color to your landscape photos. We're going to show you how to select and isolate certain colors in your image as well as how to select areas like the sky and actually add more color. We got a great quick episode for you guys, let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop. So here's our image for today, and you can actually download this on Flurn.com. Just follow the link in the description right down below. So we're going to start off with the foreground here. It's a beautiful environment, and everything looks great. I'm just like, man, I, I wish this was a, a little bit more green. So I want to select this color here in the foreground, this grass color, a little bit on the desaturated side, and I just want to add more color to it. So what we're going to do is go to Layer, we're going to go to new adjustment layer and I'm going to go to hue slash saturation. Let's hit OK and you can see it creates a hue saturation adjustment layer. So basically what we're going to do here, I'll just show you guys how this works super briefly and then we'll jump into actually changing the color of the grass. So here you can change the hue of your image, which the hue, think of this more like uh, what color it is. So red, green, purple, that sort of thing. Okay. Your saturation has to do with how much color you have. So if you increase your saturation all the way up, you've got a lot of color all the way down in your black and white. Okay. And then you have your lightness, which just makes things brighter or darker. For the most part, I recommend staying away from brightness on this slider because really this is, you know, it, it's not helping anyone out. Like if you're trying to make an image brighter or darker, you should probably just use a curves adjustment layer instead. Okay. So let's go ahead and reset all of those. Now, the deal here is that, let's say I wanted to affect my grass, if I brought my hue a little bit over and saturation up and stuff like that, the, the problem with this is it's affecting my entire image. You can see, especially as I bring my hue over, it's going to affect the background and this person and all these rocks and things like that. So we need to basically tune in to just the grass in our image. So let's go ahead and show you guys how to do that. So back in Photoshop, let's go ahead and reset this. Now, this entire time we've been working with our master, which basically just means your entire photograph. And you can actually specify which colors you'd like to edit. So here where it says master, I'm going to click and we'll see a little bit of drop down. We see our reds, yellow, green, cyan, blues, and magentas. Now, my suggestion here is you don't need to pay so much attention to this because th this color is like, well, what is that? Is it yellow or green? Really, you can click on any of these. So let's go ahead and click on greens. And then what you want to do after clicking here is use your eyedropper. This eyedropper all the way to the left, use that to identify the color that you actually want to edit. So grab your eyedropper there and then simply go over to your image and click on the color that you want to change. Okay, that's all you have to do. So now when I change my sliders here, it's going to affect this color range, which is really cool. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. So I'm going to bring my hue just a little bit to the right here add a little bit more like, you know, it's kind of like the dead color a little bit. We're just going to bring that to the right, put it to a little bit more towards green and then increase our saturation. And you can do this with any grass or like really anything in your image. Um, if you were going for like a little bit more special effects, you could definitely just like push this to the left and get like a, you know, a reddish color, which I think looks really cool, but obviously has very specific use cases, right? So we're just going to go a little bit more to the right and make this look a little bit more realistic. Now you don't want to go too far to the right or it's going to start looking like a little bit on the bluish side and you know right about here that that's just not going to look good. So um, I'm just going to pump this up just a little bit. There we go to about plus 20. Let's just go to 20 and hit enter. Okay so now we can adjust our saturation here and again you can use your lightness slider here to go lighter or darker on that color. But again, I suggest using a curves adjustment layer if you're going to go brighter or darker. Okay, well, that's pretty simple, guys. So just turning this layer off and on, we can see we were able to target that green in the image and basically just turn it to like a brighter, more alive, more vibrant green. And we can see as I turn this off and on, not only is it getting the greens here, but it's also getting literally every single bit of green in my image. So anything that fits that same color range, it's going to move on and turn this color. Now if there are any areas like this rock for instance, okay, that was just a kind of a similar color to this that it's kind of turned in the rock green, all you have to do is click on your layer mask, okay, 
and use your brush tool to paint black over top of any area like these rocks. Just paint black on your layer mask and it's going to make sure that this layer does not show up in those areas. So if you do color an area by accident that you don't want to color, really, really simple. Just paint black on your layer mask and it's going to switch it back to the original color. All right, let's make sure we get those little rocks, things like that there. I'm just going to go right around the image. There is some grass here, so we want to make sure we still include the grass. But again, these rocks, we don't need to color change all those rocks. All right. That looks really good. So basically, we've taken care of the grass area in our image. And this can be done with anything. If you have yellow flowers in your image, you can target those colors and then change either the hue or saturation to bring them more vibrant. So now that we've done the ground, let's go ahead and focus on the sky. So back in Photoshop, this time what we want to do is create a selection first. So what we're going to do is grab our magic wand tool. You can hit W for the magic wand tool. Simply click here on your magic wand. And we want to make sure to click on sample all layers. So we're going to sample all of our layers and we're going to start out with our tolerance about 10. And your tolerance has to do with how much it actually will select. So in this case, let's go ahead and click on our sky. Okay, and you're seeing it's not selecting our entire sky. So let's bring our tolerance up to about 20. All right, and try again. Okay, select it a little bit more. Let's go ahead and bring it up to 30 and try it again. Okay, that's pretty good. Let, you know what, let's go right up one more. We're just gonna go to 40. Let's deselect and click here. That's pretty good. Now, if you need to add any areas to your selection, it's very easy to do. Let's simply zoom in, hold down the shift key, and you can see when I hold down shift, my magic wand has a little plus icon. You can see it there. It's got a little plus icon next to my magic wand. So now I'm just gonna click in any areas that I wanna grab. And in this case, I'm gonna make sure to click between our subject's legs as well, because we want that area to be included. Okay, so now zooming out, uh, obviously in this case, it was a relatively simple selection because our sky is relatively simple, but we have our sky selected. So now we can alter the color of just the sky. To do so, we're going to use another hue saturation adjustment layer. So let's go up to layer, down to new adjustment layer, and over to hue saturation. There we go. We're going to hit OK. Now, in this case, I don't really need to work with the existing color that's already there. We want to use a tool called Colorize, which is going to allow us to color this however we want. So here in our hue saturation adjustment layer, we're going to start off by clicking on Colorize. There we go. So in this case, you can see master is kind of grayed out. We can't even choose specific colors because we're going to literally color the sky however we want to color it. So we've got two different methods of for a hue saturation. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. I'm going to bring my saturation up and you can see it's got a little bit of a like red color here. So if I want to change the hue, simply click on your hue slider and drag this from the left to the right. Okay, and obviously, you know, sky is blue, right? So we want to we want to find somewhere right about there with our blue sky. So basically, we just selected that area first, and now I'm just telling it to, hey, be that color. And we can change our saturation as well. So if you want a slightly lower saturated blue, you can have that. If you want to have a way saturated, obviously, this kind of looks fake, so I wouldn't recommend going that high. But right about there, we have a nice looking image. Let's just go ahead and zoom out. Sometimes if I'm editing color, I like to really zoom out because it, it helps me get a gauge of like, you know, if you're, if you're really zoomed in, it's hard to tell what the image looks like as a whole. So I'm just gonna zoom way out and then like, here's where I'm gonna adjust my saturation and, and my hue so I can see what does this look like from, from far away. It's just gonna help me see how all the colors kind of blend together. All right, and I can even tweak the color here on the grass if I need to. So let's go back to that hue saturation adjustment layer. I'm going to click where it says master and go down to yellows two. Remember we used the eyedropper and that created our yellow two. So we can adjust our saturation there. So, you know, you just don't want to go too saturated. It's going to look uh, really fake. So just want to make sure everything matches. So I just brought that down just a little bit. Yeah, I was at 26 before bringing that down to about 20. And there we go. We're looking really good. So let's go ahead and zoom back in here. Okay, so we've got our sky now. Let's go ahead and turn this off, or on, off and on. And you can see, effectively, we've colored our sky, which is really, really cool. Now, moving one step beyond this, if you wanted to, let's say you wanted more color in the top of your sky and less color in the bottom of your sky, 
What you could do is use your gradient tool on your layer mask. Okay, so I've got my gradient tool. We've got a foreground to transparent gradient. It's right here. Just simply click on foreground to transparent. And I've got my linear gradient. So I'm going to drag from the bottom right up. There we go. And what this does, you can see, I'll just go up a little farther. It's going to put less of the color down here and more of the color up there. Okay, or I can come from the top down, which is going to do the opposite. But in this case, I think we're looking really good as is. Okay, guys, well, that's basically it. So we've taken, we started off by isolating this green color here. It's kind of like yellowy, browny color, actually. Isolating that and then turning the color of that. And then we created a selection around our sky and filled that with blue. So let's go ahead and group those. I'm going to hit Shift and click both of them and hold down Control or Command G. That's going to group them together. And let's go ahead and take a look at our before and our after. Okay guys, this is an incredibly simple technique that you can use on pretty much any of your photos. It's gonna work really well on landscape photos. Basically, anytime you have a certain color that you wanna change or a certain area like the sky, you can use these exact same techniques. And don't forget, you can download this exact image on flern.com. Just follow the link in the description right down below. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll flern you later. Bye, everyone. Okay.